Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video, and today we will be going over Mobile Legends Adventures, the ultimate gameplay guide. This guide will focus on giving you a complete overview of all gameplay features. First, we will start out with the main features of MLA, and to truly enjoy and get the most out of the game, you must understand the game and all it has to offer. Let's take a quick look at what in-game currency Mobile Legends Adventures has, and what is their purpose. What are their uses? Different game currencies. Gems. The premium currency in the game is used for literally almost everything. From speeding up tavern bounties, refreshing the market, and summons for heroes. Gems are rewarded for leveling up, progressing in the campaign, completing achievements, arena victories, summoning new heroes, and beating levels of the Tower of Babel, and various events and tasks. Gold. Gold is primarily used for leveling up heroes and gear, as well as making purchases in the market. Shrine Crystals Shrine Crystals are given as a reward for dismantling 1 and 2 star heroes and can be used to purchase specific hero shards in the dismantle shop. So let's get started and find out what you didn't already know and what buildings and features you haven't been fully taking advantage of. So first, we have the market. The market is an in-game store for purchasing items. Items for sale can include hero shards, arena entries, hero experience, advanced essence, equipment, and other essential items. You can also directly buy scrolls in the market, and these can be purchased by either using gold or gems. You can refresh the store every 4 hours for free, or it can be refreshed at a cost of 20 gems. Purchasing an item from the market is currently a daily quest that you will want to complete. So get comfortable with the market and understand what miscellaneous items you want to grab before refreshing the shop. Just a tip, skill stones are always needed later on, and gold is not. So next, we have the Holy Sanctuary. The Holy Sanctuary is a spot that allows you to maintain a team of a minimum level as long as you have at least 5 characters leveled. There is not a daily quest associated with the Holy Sanctuary. However, the Holy Sanctuary is very, very useful for having different team compositions without having to allow all your resources to more than five characters. This is how the Sanctuary works. Your top five leveled heroes are placed on the platforms. Any heroes you add to the slots available on the right side will be leveled up to the lowest of your five featured heroes. More hero slots are unlocked by progressing through the story. Heroes on the slot can be removed manually with a 24 hour cooldown following. Be thankful for the Holy Sanctuary because with it you will never have to level more than 5 characters by using your precious resources. Now we have the Dismantle Shrine. The Dismantle Shrine is used to reset heroes levels, dismantle low star heroes for materials, and dismantle equipment in return for equipment enhancement items. Although there is no daily quest for the Dismantle Shrine, there is a shop that allows you to purchase hero shards with the materials gained from dismantling heroes. The reset hero feature is used to reset and return all material used in the leveling of a hero. Do this if you need to change from a low star hero to a high star hero. Or, if you have made a mistake in leveling a wrong hero, just use the reset hero function and you will be able to reset your hero 4 star or above for the cost of 20 gems. Character Dismantle is used to dismantle a 1 and 2 star hero, giving you Shrine Crystals, Hero XP, and Advanced Essence in the process. The Equipment tab is used to dismantle equipment in return to receive Enhancement Material. The Artifact tab is not currently in use. However, the best part of the Dismantle Shrine is definitely going to be the Shop. The shop is going to be where you're able to purchase common and specific hero shards. The campaign is a main story mode of Mobile Legends Adventure. The campaign gameplay is a mix of both idle and active. And this is where you will get your idle rewards and unlock new features based on your progress. The arena. The arena is the main PvP aspect of this game. You receive three free arena tickets every day, and two tickets with the completion of the daily quest for arena, which is very simple to complete. The gameplay can be manual, but like always, battles can be skipped or auto-completed. The Labyrinth The Labyrinth is where you will complete daily mini dungeons that reward you with equipment, 
equipment enhancement drops, and gems. Damage taken by heroes and energy left is persistent through fights, meaning your heroes do not regain health and their energy bars do not reset. They are left where they were with the last fight. Each clear adds to your metal rank, and upon clearing a dungeon, you will unlock a new dungeon where your rewards and possibilities of better rewards increase. Next, we have the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel is an endless challenge mode where your team faces off against enemies that increase in power every level you advance. The tower is believed to have infinite levels, and by completing a level, you are rewarded with minor rewards. However, major rewards are rewarded every 10 levels. Now let's take a look at the newest area in the game, the Time Portal. The Time Portal is a hub where you can access both the Crusade and the Trials. The Crusade is a challenge mode which resets every 24 hours. Rewards include gold, hero shards, miscellaneous materials, and there are 9 levels with the difficulty scaling based on your current game progression. Every 3 levels there is a boss. Damage is persistent just like the game mode before in many dungeons. Although in this crusade, if a hero dies, you may spend 100 gems to revive them. The Trials The Trials are located in the Time Portal as well. The Trials are a place with three separate trials which can be completed every 24 hours. The rewards include Advanced Essences, Hero Experience, and Miscellaneous Materials. There are multiple types of trials, including War Deity, which only takes damage from male heroes. Valkyrie, which only takes damage from female heroes. Hunting, which only takes damage from ranged heroes. And many others. Completing both of these modes grant Chrono Stars, which are then used to unlock locations on the Star Soul Hourglass, which determine rewards given to you every 72 hours. Every four Chrono Stars earned allows you to unlock four stars in the Hourglass, which all give random rewards. Now we have the Fusion Shrine. The Fusion Shrine is a place where you are able to fuse duplicate heroes to advance the base hero a star grade. Upgrading specific star levels requires specific requirements. You are able to check what is required by clicking on a specific hero and checking what comes up. One of the most visited and most beloved and most hated but also most insane places in the game is the Wishing Shrine. The Wishing Shrine is the place to summon new as well as duplicate heroes for your team. Each premium and miracle summon give you 10 chest points, which can be redeemed for a random 5 star hero once the bar in that top right of the screen hits 1000. There is a daily quest associated with the premium summons, and there are currently 3 types of summons. The premium summon, this summon using premium summon tickets or gems, 280 gems for one summon, or 2,500 gems for 10 summons. The Miracle Summon. This summon uses Miracle Tokens, currency for higher chances of 4 and 5 star heroes, and you also get to select the type. Friendship Summon. Summon using hearts received from friends. Lowest chances of high tier and high star heroes. Now we have the Tavern. The Tavern features a mission board that allows you to send out heroes to complete missions for you. The only requirement per quest is that the heroes match either the minimum power level required or the minimum star level required. There are a few different quests with rewards that scale in difficulty of each quest. There is a daily quest associated with the tavern missions. Here are a few examples. Now that we're in the tavern, we can see what we get from the normal bounties. Right now, guild bounty is yet to come. It's a feature coming soon, so you guys stay put and continue with your normal bounties for now. We have the City Guards Commission, which is a two-hour quest. We can hit the start button and see what's required. It requires two two-star heroes. What you almost always want to do is hit that quick deploy button, hit that start button, and instantly you're going to see the time start ticking. And when that time is up, you are actually going to receive the three-star hero, four shards of that three-star hero, based on the prize available from completing that quest. So, in this specific case, we're going to have that free speed up, we're going to use the free speed up, and here's your reward. Just like that, that's how you're going to use this tavern every day to complete your quest. Now that you understand the main features of Mobile Legends Adventures, let's try looking at what types of heroes are available. You have Elemental, Tech, Martial, Light, and Dark. 
These types are all able to form a resonance. A resonance gives your team better stats based on what resonance passive applies to them. Here are the resonance passives that are available. So this is my team in the campaign and I'm going to click my resonance. This is going to be the resonance in the top left corner. In the resonance you're going to be able to see the different attributes and stats you're going to gain as a passive to all of your characters if you have that resonance completed. So the current resonance that I have on this team is deploy five heroes of different types to obtain an attribute bonus. And I have HP plus 8%, magic power plus 12%, physical attack plus 12%. So that's going to be the lowest amount you can gain. That is going to be by having one of each type or character. Um, you know, I have one tech, I have one uh, elemental, I have one martial, I have one dark, I have one light, and that's going to be my team I have currently. So that's the reason I'm getting this resonance. If you deploy three heroes of the same type to obtain a tribute bonus, you're going to get 10%, 15%, and 15%, which is obviously going to be higher percentages than if you had one of each. So let's just check that out real quick. So let's say we take Hellcurt out and we put in a Marshall and then we have Alucard out there now with our AK and we're going to take Saber out and we're going to throw in a Nether Marshall just to kind of show you guys what we're dealing with here. Uh, if I could find one, there we go, we got another Marshall. So we have that deploy three heroes of the same type to an obtain an attribute bonus and it shows up green. To secure and make sure you have that bonus, make sure you click on your resonance and you actually have it light up as green. If you don't have it lighting up as green, you don't have that bonus right now. So let's continue to go down the chart and see if we can obtain every bonus. So now we have the deploy three heroes of the same type plus two heroes of another type to an obtain an attribute bonus. The bonus at this point is going pretty dang high. You're going to get that 15% HP, 18% magic power, and then that 80% attack, physical attack. So let's see if we can do it. Uh, obviously, these guys are not my normal team, so beware. Don't try to follow what I'm doing right now. All right, so right here you saw it kind of shine up a little bit, and they don't have a shiny one over here. You can actually click on your opponents as well, uh, and you can see that they actually don't have any resonance right now. So let's click on my resonance, and you're going to be able to see that I have deployed three heroes of the same type plus two heroes of another type to obtain an attribute bonus. And this is the bonus I currently have. And now we're going to go to the deploy four heroes of the same type to obtain an attribute bonus. It's going to be 20% all across the board, and it's actually a fairly easy bonus to get. So here we are. We have that four of one type bonus, and you're going to see that we have that 20%, 20%, 20%. Now the final and last one is going to be that obvious deploy five heroes of the same type to obtain an attribute bonus. It's going to be 25% across the boards on HP, magic power, physical attack, and we're just going to throw another marshal in there if we can find another marshal. Uh, here we go. Oh, we got two of the same ones. By the way, that does work. If you guys were questioning that, the resonance does pop up and it shows highlighted in green, which lets you know that you do have it. But, you know, you obviously don't want to run the same character most of the time, so I would not suggest doing this. But this is just an example to show you guys that resonance ability in the passive it kind of grants you. Make sure you guys understand what team you are going to be best with because of this resonance kicking in. Make sure you try to use one of these resonances. They really do help your team a lot and boost your stats. After looking at some of the resonance passives, Let's take a look at what kind of characters are available on Mobile Legends Adventures. There are fighters, which are purely offensive oriented heroes, and most have no self-sustain, and the only support they generally offer is to buff their hitting power. Mages, offense oriented backline heroes, generally provided area of effect skills to damage groups of enemies. Supports, which are limited offense heroes, Things like healers and buffers, assassins, squishy heroes that generally deal high single target damage and can often jump across the map to attack the enemy's backline. Marksmans, mid-range heroes that usually have small AoE skills and decent survivability. Ranged attacks and utility are often combined. These heroes are all obtainable by summoning like previously stated. Lastly, before I end the ultimate guide of way too much information, let's understand what an epic hero is, or what most people call it, a nat 5. 
only certain characters fall under that Nat 5 category. And if you look at heroes that fall under that category in the Gallery tab, you will notice that Epic Heroes are special for more than one reason. The Epic Heroes are always summoned as a 5 star hero. They will always have better stats than 4 star or elite heroes. The Epic Heroes are the rarest in the game. They are far superior to other heroes in the game. So if you have an Epic Hero, be happy because most likely that Epic Hero is pretty good and he will help you progress faster than you would without him. So thank you again for watching the Mobile Legends Adventures Ultimate Gameplay Guide. I really appreciate this support and I hope you guys enjoy this great game.